The main advantage of using software synthesizers as opposed to physical hardware synths is that they are much cheaper than their hardware counterparts and also more powerful because they usually have more options available. I won't enter the debate of the sound quality here, which to me is way too subjective. <laughs> However, hardware synths are clearly more practical and user-friendly because you can use hardware, physical buttons and knobs to control any synth parameter in real time. But they can also be intimidating in some instances. <laughs> anyway, in this video I want to show you how to control with physical hardware knobs and buttons not only your DAW, but also any of your software VST instruments. Here we'll use one of the most powerful but also complex software synths, namely Arterios Pigments, as an instrument running under Cubase. And we'll control both Cubase and Pigments using hardware knobs and buttons from this Nectar CS12. Some sort of best of both worlds solution if you wish. So here is an example of what I want to do. To be honest, I've looked at many control surfaces which help you do that, but for complex plugins like software synthesizers, you might have many parameters to control, and it quickly becomes very cumbersome and definitely not user-friendly to use a control surface like this to control all the requested parameters. But in this video, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how to control more than 400 synthesizer parameters per track and that's on top of the DAW controls that can be achieved at the same time. So let's start with the DAW control. The nice thing about the CS12 is that it comes readily configured for Cubase and for Logic, which are two very popular DAW systems. So you can do the usual thing that many control surfaces can do, and it works right out of the box. You can zoom in and zoom out. You can navigate in your project timeline. You've got, of course, all the transport buttons to navigate um, in your project. You can use markers to go to the beginning of your project or to any position in, in it. You can open the mixer and navigate through the tracks. And you can see that the colors of this button change um, according to the track colors. You also have a very nice motorized fader that you can use to control volume, for instance, for every track, and the panning button as usual. So, the usual stuff that you expect from a control surface. But in addition to that, I want to control many parameters in my software synthesizer. So, the question is, how can I control over 400 parameters with 12 knobs and 4 buttons, like in this setup? Well, the CS12 comes with a configuration software called Nectarine, and I can use it to create pages. Here, I have access to my home page, which is the default page that contains the most used parameters for my VST instrument. But I can create one or more pages, say, for the Engine 1 parameters, uh, one or more pages for the LFOs, one or more pages for the filters, etc., etc. So, the first page is the home page. It's the default page. It is automatically available when I select the corresponding track, that is, the track which contains my VST instrument. In this setup, I can control four macro buttons, which allow to modify several parameters from my synth. Note that I could also use Cubase Quick Controls, for example. The other most common settings I usually like to fiddle with are the um, main filter frequency and resonance, as well as the VCA ADSR envelope parameters. Also, as you can see, I can assign colors to the knobs, and these colors are on the display here, along with the current values for each parameter. 
I can also assign parameter control to the four buttons here, which I colored in blue to indicate that I am in the home page. Note that there are four other buttons here that I can also use to control various switches, but I will instead use them to navigate among the pages as we're going to see right now. So yes, it's now time to see how to program the CS12 to control pigments and some of its 2000 parameters. So in order to control any VST instrument or VSTi, uh, we will use Nectarine software. And instead of assigning pigments to a new track, I'm going to assign Nectarine to the track. It is shown here once it's been installed. And now I can tell Nectarine which VSTi I wish to control in this track, in our case pigments. Note that Nectarine allows you to control multiple VSTi's and plugins in the same track, but we won't use that feature in this video. Then we can remove the browser and select the rack view to see our plugin instrument. But before we assign the knobs to the functions we want, let's have a look at the map page. It shows you what knobs and buttons have already been assigned. For example, here we see the home page that we've seen before, with the filter parameters and the ADSR parameters, as well as the macro buttons. But that may not be the configuration you want to use for your workflow. So how do you create your own? Well, you can reassign any function available in your VSTi instrument to one of the knobs or buttons. And although I could use this page, which is the default or home page, let's create a brand new one and call it test page. And now I have two easy ways to assign knobs and buttons to the parameters I wish to control. The, the first one is to pick the function in the list on the left and drag it to the desired knob or button if it's a toggle function. Note that you have more than 2000 parameters available in that list for pigments. <laughs> uh, the second way is to use the learn mode. The first thing is to switch to the rack view to see your instrument parameters and then to enter the CS12 learn mode. For that, you just press Shift Setup and then for each function to be assigned, you select the function first and then the physical knob or button you want it assigned to. For example, here's how we assign this Engine 2 Bypass function to the second button there. Now, of course, I can assign two knobs too, like for instance, this Engine 1 volume parameter to this knob here. As you can see, the Engine 1 volume knob has been assigned here, as well as the Engine Bypass switch. And now I can control the four macro functions, Engine 1 volume and the Engine 2 Bypass toggle in all instances of pigments I might create in other tracks, or even other Cubase projects. Finally, you might want to use colors to match the physical knobs and buttons to the functions. To do that, you exit the Learn mode, and then use the Shift button to select the knob or button, and the menu button to choose the color you want, like this. So that's how you create a page with 12 knobs and four buttons. You can create like this as many pages as you want. And you have here again, two ways to navigate among pages. The first one is to turn the menu knob and select the page you want. The second one consists in using these buttons, but then of course you can only have access to four other pages per page, or you can use sub-pages. For instance, here I can select the Engine 1 page, which defaults to the first sub-page, or the last used sub-page if you accessed it before, and which controls the analog engine parameters. And from there I can use the other buttons to go to other sub-pages, either directly or by cycling through the sub-page list. And these are the buttons to click on to add or delete pages and subpages. And don't forget to save your setup when done. Oh, I almost forgot. If you want to control parameters which are not in the current page, just press and release the select button here, and then click on the parameters you want to control, and then just use either the fader or the pan button to change their values. Okay, to wrap up this video, let me show you an example using the home page and the LFO page. Mm -hmm. 